after seven and a half years, three delays, and a bundle of crunch abuse, Cyberpunk 2077 is finally here. But was it worth the wait? A lot of what I'm going to say is probably mirrored in almost every other review for this game. And that's more than likely because we can all agree this game is pretty f***. From what I can tell, the PC version isn't too bad, but I played the console version, and it's bad. Every time I started to get invested and immersed in the world, some bug would pull me right out of it. There are more than a few glitches in the system, and I've made a list. <clears throat> Clipping, bouncing objects, absent animations, sticky dialogue options, soft textures popping in, missing environments, floaters, freezing, crashing, this overprotective man, disembodied lights, dying prematurely, invisible biochips, quest dialogue not getting played, pixel outlines, poor frame rate, broken elevators, group Skype calls, NPCs just straight up giving up on life, magic teleporting NPCs, magic lighting effects, magic phones, magic guns, Oh, and this one time, I took a tumble. Worst of all though, just plain being ugly. It gives Fallout 76 a run for its money. I was disappointed when this got delayed from the old April release date, but thank god it was. Because if this is what the game is like after an extra 7 months of development, I dread to think how it looked back then. Sometimes, it's fine. And then sometimes, it looks like this. It's a shame too, because Night City is packed tight with amazing characters and world building. It's not the bleeding edge, boundary pushing technical marvel that some may have expected, but it's pretty solid stuff. That is of course, when it works like it's supposed to, which is very rare. After 70 odd gigabytes worth of updates, so many moments that could have been really cool are still ruined by bugs or trash AI. Sometimes you can try and ignore them, but other times they break the game. Alright, from now on I'll try and talk about the game without mentioning the bugs, not making any promises them. Also, it'd be unfair to keep comparing an artist's current work to their old projects, so I'll only do it once. None of the story moments or character interactions ever managed to match the quality of The Witcher 3. And that's doubly true for the side quests, which end up being closer to the generic side content you'd find in Skyrim or any open world Ubisoft game. Although when the missions feature characters that appear in the main story, there's still more depth and nuance to them than most other RPGs. The one point I'll give Cyberpunk over The Witcher are the little details that pop up in the character discussion scenes. It's nothing major, but for some reason, seeing Jackie's knee bouncing up and down in anticipation did so much towards making him feel real. One character does obviously stand out above the rest. Usually, I feel like celebrities in games can be a bit on the nose and ruin the immersion for me, but Keanu Reeves' portrayal as a cocky rockstar anarchist is such a good example of playing against type that I honestly didn't mind. It takes a while for his character to show up, but once he does, the game really starts shifting into gear. The first few hours are a bit of a slog, mostly consisting of drawn out cutscenes, explaining the world and its finer details. Details that I'd have preferred to discover playing the game. I barely needed to touch my controller for 80% of the prologue in Act 1. Considering the frame rate drops when you start moving though, that might have been a good thing. Combat wise, I've not really got anything to say. I imagine if it worked, it'd be decent enough. Basically the same as a Deus Ex game. As a matter of fact, a lot of Cyberpunk seems like a slightly different spin on Deus Ex. Mostly that applies to the gameplay, but even aesthetically, there's undeniable similarities. I don't think there's any copying going on, it's just interesting to see how much of the hype for Cyberpunk was based on how unique and special it'd be, 
when it's essentially an unofficial Deus Ex sequel. Cyberpunk does have some unique sci-fi ideas that I like. The brain dancers are a cool concept, and human trafficking people for their cyberware has been touched on in other games like Deus Ex, but it's not often tackled this close up. So yeah, dreadful driving, lousy presentation and gameplay, moments that should be cool but aren't, and badly paced intro until Keanu Reeves shows up. All wrapped up in what should be a beautiful neon soaked world with so much promise yet one that seems content in letting itself down every single chance it gets. Hopefully, next time, they just delay their game indefinitely until it's actually playable. There's more than likely a good game hidden underneath here. I definitely think I could recommend it if they patched most of the problems out. But until that happens, the console version of Cyberpunk is such a disappointment, because it really could have been something special. Obviously, I'm not even close to finishing the game yet. I don't imagine many of my issues are going to be addressed and fixed by the third act then. PC players, cautiously dive in. Console players that haven't already bought the game, hold off for a bit. Hey guys, bit of a disappointment to have to rip into Cyberpunk after The Witcher 3 was so incredible, but buggy games that they fix later are just the nature of the industry now. If you've been experiencing any really bad bugs in Cyberpunk, feel free to share them in the comments, because so far, the ridiculous amount of brokenness that this game is, is the only thing keeping me entertained. Anyway, cheers, thanks.